My name is Marsha Maines. I'm here today to speak about Shafted Shadwell, a young boy at 16 who was pursued by a local sexual predator. Um, there are assumed to be men today who are sexual predators, but there are female sexual predators as well. She was 19, he was 16. He, For his 16th birthday, he was offered the opportunity to enjoy the wonders of her body. And he did, along with six other people. And when he turned 18 and he became of legal age, she decided that he needed to marry her because she was a good Southern Baptist girl and her daddy expected her to marry anyone that she brought home to meet the parents. He refused and a couple of months later ended up becoming a father and was told that if he didn't marry her, she would do everything in her power to ruin his life forever. Um, here we are almost 20 years later. He's on his fifth incarceration by the DCSC of Virginia. They have falsified documentations. Uh, she has submitted falsified information under oath and then testified in direct contradiction to those statements under oath in court. Um, what I'm really here about today is talk about child support and how it is the, my belief, the purpose of the federal government and the state government's job, what they are trying to do is create a new form of slavery or institute a new state of poundage and they're using non-custodial parents to do this. They're using non-attorneys to create cases by which the state of Virginia and other states can obtain federal incentive monies under the Title IV D uh, welfare program. The Title IV D program was initiated in the late 80s to assist welfare moms, technically, get off of welfare by demanding that fathers uh, assist in the financial support of their children. After the Bradley Amendment was passed, which stated once an alleged arrearage is created, it can never be erased, even through bankruptcy, that a man or a non-custodial parent, typically 95% of them are men, that they would be liable for this debt until it was either paid or they died. And the Bradley Amendment, which on the federal level needs to be repealed, um, it, it just does not get enough attention at all. Um, and it's part of, I think, the federal agenda to rein in all of the state programs and use people to um, generate funding for the states. Um, I have a written document here I'd like to read. The former deputy director of the FBI, Watergate's infamous deep throat, said to the Washington Post investigative journalists Woodward and Bernstein, the simple maxim, follow the money. It was testified before a joint task force of the General Assembly in November of 2001 then chaired by Lieutenant Governor John Hager, that child abuse, drug abuse, juvenile delinquency, teenage pregnancy, teenage violence, and teen suicide all have substantial links and are malignant outgrowths of the destructive forces of divorce. And I believe that this also includes single parents out there who may or may not have ever even considered marriage as an alternative to raising their children. Virginia's DCSE, which is also uh, which is an acronym for the Division of Child Support Enforcement. Their purpose is to divide families and promote divorce because it brings in over a half a billion dollars to the state of Virginia. 65% of the money that is used to provide social services programs for the entire state comes in through this one agency, the DCSC, and they obtain millions of dollars in federal incentive payments based on the number of cases that they can create. The Attorney General and the Governor of Virginia has stated that there, that every single child support order in the state of Virginia must be funneled through the DCSE, which is not exactly accurate. And what it does is it takes the authority of individual parents to determine the financial welfare of their children out of the parents' hands, and it puts it in a government agency's hands. They're looking to secure uh, court orders so that in one parent is ordered to pay the other parent money through the state's bank accounts upon which they can generate interest and that is how they are funding the state. The Constitution has never seen the inside of a family court. Most family courts are courts not of record and unfortunately of the 9,000 parents that were incarcerated just last year thanks to the DCSE 
um, I'm sure that majority of them, and a lot of them that I've talked to, had no clue whatsoever what their rights were under the Constitution, either of Virginia or of the United States, nor did they have any clue that there was no such thing as a court reporter in a court not of record. If they didn't hire their own court reporter, not only were they giving up their rights to an appeal, but they were giving up their rights to pursue any additional litigation to prove what was being said in that courtroom. And not only are people not aware of the fact that it's not illegal to lie in a courtroom, it's only illegal if you lie under oath. And if you don't have a court reporter present, if you haven't brought in your own court reporter to a family court, you have given up every right to your child and everything that is said and done in that courtroom by the lawyers and the judges and the DCSC, you will lose. It doesn't matter what you have to say. If you don't have a court reporter, you're gonna lose your rights. Founding Father Thomas Jefferson also said, judges whose erroneous biases are leading us to dissolution should be removed from the bench. It may injure them in fame or fortune, but it will save our republic. I think this nation is in a complete state of crisis, and I, I truly feel in my heart that we're close to a civil war. We've got many, many men across this country who are having their hearts torn out by these biased judges. And when they lose access to their children, a lot of them commit suicide. I mean, back in the year 2000, we had over 11,000 suicides by men who were denied access to their children. Why? Why is this happening? It's happening because I think men feel that it is their responsibility. It's too personal. They don't want to make a public issue out of it. And the reality is men need to stand up and be men and lead this country and to walk into a courtroom and point their finger to these female predators I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm not going to listen to you anymore. I have equal rights under the law, and I'm not going to allow a judge to sit here and dictate what can and can't be done with my own child. And I think that men need to know that there are women out there that support this. Right. I'm not the only one. There are others. In Virginia, a woman can rape a man first sexually and then repeatedly by gang rape, and she does this judicially and financially by using these family courts, courts not of record. The Dred Scott decision was about the fugitive state law, and in America today, if a father leaves one state due to the oppressive slavery of an excessive child support burden, it becomes a federal crime, and he's arrested in the other state and extradited for trial in the former state for a return to jail and servitude, or even excessive child support fines and additional fees for his slavery. Dan Shadwell, in 1997, was ordered to pay 92% of his gross income to a female sexual predator who chose to procreate so that she could extort money out of him to ruin his life forever. She has never been held accountable for any of her actions. Had the rules been reversed, the man would have been incarcerated for being a sexual predator and raping a younger person who was underage. Today, you don't see females being incarcerated either for anything. There are too many women that are supported by the domestic groups and the, and the women's groups out there, and it's just, it's appalling. Debtors prisons and slavery have been abolished in America for over a century, except for one remaining class of slaves, the non-custodial parents. In our country, 95% of the non-custodial parents are men. These new non-custodial parents become slaves of the new slave masters, divorcing mothers and their slave traders, our state judges and our lawyers. But wait just one minute there. It's all Amen. about the kids. It's all about the best interests of the child, right? Fathers should pay for their children, fair enough. But what about when you have a sexual predator who procreates on purpose? Too often, fathers who cannot pay wildly inflated income assessments by judges or the administratively applied compounded interest and penalties tacked on by child support enforcement agencies without any regard to what the facts of the case are. They're jailed. Too many fathers are being jailed. 